Brad also talked about his spirituality and why he loves Kanye West's Sunday service. How did that come about? And the people want to know who is your fave Kardashian. I know. <laughs> Talk about nonsense. I will, I will not pick favorites, but no, I, I, it was, it was. I think he's doing something really special there. It's just, it's a pure celebration of, of life and people, and it's, it's, it's really delightful. It really is. We share a common future. I am growing up in a world that is more and more divided. Sikhism teaches us that no one is my enemy, no one is a foreigner, and with all, I am at peace. I am growing up in a world that encourages hatred more than ever. Buddhism teaches us hatred does not cease by hatred, but only by love. So, so let's, let's transform, transform conflict, conflict and, and care, care for our common future. future. Um, I want to talk about um, Kanye's Sunday service uh, yes. because he created a church service with music that's turned into these really big weekly events. And we had David Letterman on the show, and I asked him about it, and he raved about it, actually. <laughs> um, he came at a really early stage when it yeah. was just inside of a rehearsal studio. Yeah, Kanye started this... Um, I think just to heal himself and made it, it was a really personal thing and it was just friends and family. And he has had an amazing evolution of being born again and being saved by Christ. And he has now um, made it, you know, people always ask, well, what are you worshiping and what is this? It is a Christian service, like a musical ministry. It is... You know, they, they talk about Jesus and God and... Is there a minister sing. there? Sometimes. So if okay. he goes to a different church where he has, they've shown up and mm -hmm. done these surprise little pop-up Sunday services at other churches. So whatever pastor speaks there. Um, and sometimes at the one in Calabasas, he'll have friends that are pastors that are in town get up and speak. But for the most part, it's just a musical ministry. Um, it doesn't, you know, he doesn't have his like 501-3C yet. <laughs> But, um, you know, right. to make it a, an official church, right. but it is um, for God and, and it's a Christian church. I think that was sometimes people are like, well, what is this and right. what, are they, right. what are they doing? But it started off healing for him and now it's become something that he just really wants to share for everybody else. I don't think it's really controversial if people want to, um, you know, listen to it and whatever they think about it or whatever they think about the message behind it is sort of up to them. In a matter of hours, Northerly Island will play host to Kanye West, but the Chicago hip-hop artist is not performing a traditional concert. He is holding what he calls a Sunday service. A return to home. I know he hear me when my feet get weary. World-famous rapper Kanye West back in Chicago. Yay, yeah, back in the shot, everybody screaming out. And bringing the gospel in front of thousands at Northerly Island along the lakefront. From rapping Jesus to praising Jesus, rapper Kanye West showed up for Sunday service at a Metro Atlanta church this morning. Emmy winning rapper Kanye West made a surprise visit to Atlanta for his Sunday service. Well, West led a 600-person choir at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church in DeKalb County. This is video of the service from New Birth's YouTube page. Word of his visit started leaking Friday. Long lines started forming at the Stonecrest Church. Parishioners at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church were treated to a gospel music, gospel music written and performed by West and backed up by a choir. West Sunday service events have been mostly held in California, but recently he's been taking it to other cities across the United States, and he is expected to drop a brand new gospel al album at the end of this month titled, Jesus is King. 
Chance the Rapper making a cameo at the concert series West Call's Sunday Service. Put on the devil's neck to the 26 year old Grammy winner even picking up the microphone himself. Chance, not the only local talent tapped to perform. The energy was was just amazing. It was so much fun to be part of that. No way, no bear. Sunday, the crowds flocking to Northerly Island will listen to something that is part musical experience, part religious experience. Rapper Kanye West is bringing his Sunday service series to Chicago. It is complete with a choir and described as Christian-based, including a variety of gospel and hip-hop songs. The service including messages of positivity to Chicago's youth. And I say Sunday services, does hip-hop come to mind? No, that's a new phenomenon. Um, but I applaud it if it's giving uh, young people hope. You can add Bishop Larry Trotter of Sweet Holy Spirit and Father Michael Flager of St. Sabina as in tune with West's message. Flager saying, quote, anything positive that brings people together in fellowship is a good thing, end quote. This assembly is a sign of hope in a troubled world. Representatives of different religions come together from all parts of the world to make a clear statement. God is the creator of heaven and earth. God has created every human being equally with a dignity no one may ever question. With this conference, we want to set a worldwide sign against divisions that lead to hate and violence. We want to explore ways to peace, justice, and a responsible way of dealing with non-human nature as our co-creation. Everyone must play its respective role. In this assembly, we are focusing on the role of the religious communities. In this assembly, we have a convocation of a large number of participants of men, women, and youth of almost all faith communities in the world. They validly represent the over 85% of the human race that today claim to be religious. It is significant that among those gathered here are also authoritative leaders of many important faith communities on the planet Earth. But perhaps even more significant is the fact that we, are all, we all share a strong conviction that religion must always be for peace. And the fundament for all is that we are human beings. We have differences, we have different religions, we have diff diff different political options, but we are human beings. And we have one creator who has made us. And that is very, very important for the future of the world. So I won't underline every word my brother said, but to add perhaps two aspects uh, uh, which are important also for our actual situation, that is the globalization. We have seen that the world is coming together 50 years ago. Uh, the, the landing is uh, the real word in English, the right word, landing on the moon, the, the, the first visit on the moon. And we have seen the Earth, this wonderful planet, for the first time perhaps in this brilliant beauty. And we have seen our responsibility that this earth is a, is a great gift from God for us. And so globalization is one of the great challenges. We, we come together. But the other, uh, diff the other challenge is to, to manage it, to bring globalization uh, towards more peace, more dialogue, more fruit for all, for the poor, to overcome inequality to make uh, a processus which uh, leads to a one family of human beings. That is one of the challenges. And we have seen that the, the tendencies today are going back to nationalism, to differences, to making your own interests against others. That is not the future. And the other aspect is also the challenge for the religions 
Also, we have the, have the challenge, and I'm very grateful for this meeting here in Lindau, because we, we say together as religions, we want to be instrument of peace, of dialogue. And secondly, that we seek peace and harmony within the diversities of expressions of faith in the same God, and thus become a model of a reconciled humanity. This, this stresses the importance of both interfaith and intrafaith mutual understanding and good relations. We have the great challenge to give the sign. Religion is not the problem. Religion and all the religions can be instrument, can be instrument and solution for more peace, for more dialogue, for more respect in this world. And I hope and I'm sure that this meeting can be a sign. Thank you that you are here. Welcome. Our world today is fragmented. Poverty, education, health, decent jobs, employment, strong institutions, land, water, sky, everything is interconnected. These double challenges of climate change and biodiversity loss are the threat, and that's gonna mean melting of the ice caps, sea level rise, fires, droughts, floods. A million species are headed towards extinction. We have to acknowledge that there is an urgent crisis. I keep asking myself, Almighty God, looking down on the world today, would he still find it very good? Today, more than ever, we must find ways to come together, embracing our differences and holding our chosen representatives responsible. This is precisely the moment when we need that consolidated, coordinated, whole space. 40 years plus of uh, socioeconomic development that had no religion in the equation has proved disastrous. Today we're talking about accountability. Accountability is actually deposited in the very values of faith. 85% of Earth's population belongs to a religious community. This is the largest constituency of the human family. Today the world's religions are putting problems at the center of the table and discerning deeply held, widely shared care. We are looking at common problems in the fields of knowledge, health, conflict, war. These areas do not have borders. Since its founding in 1970, Religions for Peace has been guided by a vision of religions working together as a global family to share resources and establish in unity an approach to peace that no one religion could do on its own. Across the religious, regional slash geographical, racial, ethnic, across the different divides, Religions for Peace is the convener. Over the last half century, Religions for Peace has consistently demonstrated a tested and replicable approach to multi-religious cooperation. Peace is our ultimate goal but peace is also a process. Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, had been under military rule since the 1960s. In 2015, the National League for Democracy, led by Aung San Suu Kyi, won in a landslide. Recently, the plight of the Muslim community of Rakhine State has dominated the international airwaves. As violence continued to escalate, upwards of 700,000 mostly Muslim refugees poured into neighboring Bangladesh. Cardinal Charles Bo, Archbishop of Yangon, and other members of RFP Myanmar who had been actively engaged on the grassroots level since 2012, invited a high-level international delegation to visit the country. The delegation delivered the letter to the peoples of Myanmar, carrying a call for the establishment of the RFP Advisory Forum on national reconciliation and peace in Myanmar. Of course, there are painful disagreements, but we have to keep uh, expanding that circle of dialogue among different communities. Our alliance 
honors our religious differences, even as it serves the peace for which the human heart hungers. We gather in hope, convinced that the sacred calls all humanity into shared responsibility for our common good. Each stepped through the door, pulled by an undertow, a sea of sacred mystery so deep, so good, so healing, that our experiences of it have called us to unite in an alliance of common action. Ours is an alliance of care, of mercy, of love. We are about 900 here from 125 countries, but we represent a far greater, ever-growing and ever-radiating alliance of goodness that Religions for Peace gladly serves. Of the hour that we reimagine the earth, uh, reimagine our, our, our ecosystem together. When people lock arms and collaborate on serious issues, their ability to see the other is changed. In the end, the power to affect change lies within each one of us, with our deep abiding faith, respecting, embracing, and even celebrating our many differences yet coming together as one to make our world whole again.